Hello, welcome back to Tarot by Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you for being here and thank you for the super thanks. So I was just reading up on social media, coming across quite a bit of few things. One of them is her new friend circle. Yeah, Megan's so-called allegedly new friend circle is Victoria Jackson and a designer by the name of Ariel, who is married to, excuse me, Ariel is the male, excuse me, who owns Willie Mar Morris Agency or Entertainment, and is married to Sarah Strawginger, I think that's how you say it, who is a fashion designer uh, by the name of Stad, S-T-A-U-D, worn by Kendall Jenner, Bella, and Gigi Hadid. Selena Gomez and Margot Robbie. So apparently she hangs out and they're all so quote unquote extremely cl close and quote unquote very protective, very, very protective of her. Mm, I had to laugh at that. So that was like a post that was done on July 31st of this year. Yeah. So anyways, people are wondering has Megan confronted Ari of no bookings after several months of being with him? I'd say they've been together for at least six months now. Um, so yeah, is she putting the pressure on him and what's he gonna do about it? Um, you know, the, the reason why Megan likes to go to war with everyone is because if you can see past her mask, you're number one threat. You are a number one threat, you're number one enemy. And that's why she tried taking down the Royals, right? So if he sees past her mask, She's going to try and take him down. Uh, but I don't think she would be successful, to be quite honest. Uh, I've said this before. I thought WME was basically milking her for money, that they know they can't help her. But they've had some previous lawsuits to where I think he's in a financial bind. So anyways, the Queen, Catherine, William, Philip, and everybody, Andrew even, they all saw past the mask. And so we know she does full scorched earth, right? So I'm wondering if she's going to try scorched earth on Ariel and his wife. And how is it going to sit well with Victoria Jackson, who's a makeup artist? Um, yeah, so what do I see things going with Harry? Harry's going to look for what doesn't exist, the perfect love. He's going to look for some future love, the ideal person who wants to do everything that he wants to do, more than likely. Always have to be by his side. It's that very childlike play energy that borderlines have. Um, and to love him like the parent that he felt he never had or lost, which would be his mother. And then they would have vig vigorous sex uh, and basically have a replacement parental figure, a mommy figure that he has vigorous sex with. Yeah. Um, and that's basically what Harry is going to be, his future is going to look like. I don't see him getting better, better because he's very treatment resistant. You know, he can aim for it, but he's, his defense mechanisms are always going to push back on his ego. So he's, I think he's always going to struggle. He seems to still be struggling. He's at such a rock bottom now. It's said and it's rumored that he needs therapy really bad right now. Uh, I got that he already did go through some of it, but he obviously didn't stick with it because they don't. Why? Because they get triggered, just like Megan. When they could see too much vulnerability in you. They pull out, they play scapegoat, you know, they play, I'm the victim. And so they pull out, you're hurting me, you're not kind. So they split, they paint you black, just like Megan. They all do the same shit, okay? There I said it. So Megan will just go on trying to seek any advantages over other people as usual. She will be operating manually. Everything is manual with her. Her empathy is manual. Her friendships are manual. Very tough to continue faking it. What comes natural to others is totally manual for her. Every day is a struggle. This is why she's not living her best life, although she likes to paint it that way. It's never your best life when you have to manually, cognitively always remind yourself to try and show some decency. That's a pretty lousy life. So she's not enjoying the wealth. She's really not enjoying things that a normal, healthy brained individual would. It's never enough. They can never sit there with gratitude. Gratitude is 
what brings joy. Gra what also brings joy is not ex is is being able to be happy with minimal and not complain. Gratitude, gratefulness, uh, not comparing yourself to other people. When you constantly compare yourself to other people, that is the root of misery. And that's why she will always be miserable because she keeps comparing herself to wanting to be the billionaire's wife or top. She wants to be on the top. She's got to be top hierophant where everyone's looking up to her and she gives everyone advice. Everyone looks up to her, you know, and that's the way she wants it. She wants to be very ceremonial. She really wants to uh, keep secrets, have nobody know what's going on. So she's pretty warped. I was reading up on um, some gene mutations of schizophrenia too today. Uh, they've been doing some studies on schizophrenia. There is a gene mutation that lowers the IQ. For people who go into deep psychosis, like what happens with schizophrenia, they lose IQ points. A lot of schizophrenics will have the average IQ point of 100, but they go into so much psychosis because of this horrible gene mutation, this genetic gene mutation, that they lose IQ points. Uh, they go down to about anywhere from between 60 and 80 IQ points. Through life, through psychosis, through a lack of being connected to reality and being divorced from reality actually lowers their intelligence. The only way to save someone who has this gene mutation from this study which Harry might have because he gets very psychotic. He could have this gene mutation that's been not identified. And that's another reason why he's not intelligent. They need an SSRI. They figured out they need an, an SSRI before they reach puberty. If they can get this SRI like a Prozac into their system for several years and it's identified this mutation when they're really young, they can actually save their brain from losing IQ points. I found that to be really interesting. Um, and it's too bad that a lot of families don't have the ability to go do that kind of level of medical testing and that they're just discovering it now. So that's the sad part because a lot of people can be saved from a psychotic mind and a divorce from reality just by going on an SSRI before puberty. How crazy is that? And that was a study um, from another country. That's what they're doing now. They're doing studies on it. So, you know, it's always growing and changing. I, I try to keep up on what's happening, but it's at a record speed now that it's really hard. And as I've talked about before, a lot of um, mental brain stimulation is becoming the new thing. And so is microdosing uh, shrooms, uh, you know, psilocybin. And so with electronic brain stimulation, TMS, home and office, along with microdosing, uh, psilocybin, and also other types of testing of uh, herbs and drugs and stuff um, to see what can happen. Because we really are kind of stuck at an all-time high of me high mental illness. And it doesn't seem like it's letting up at all, you guys. It just seems like it's gotten worse and worse and worse. More kids are becoming sick. I think that has to do with the shattered families. It's also the cell phones, lack of communication, shutting down of communication of families. So there's my rant. That was my little rant for the day. Maybe give you something to think about today in your own family, who you're connected with, someone you know that might be affected. Maybe think about them. Maybe it'll change your perception of them a little bit if you understand a little more. So that's why I talk about this stuff, you know, just a way to shift perspective if we have to, that sometimes they're so mentally sick, you can't hate the mentally sick because they're just too warped and divorced from reality that all the pain and suffering they cause other people is really unconsciously done. They don't like have a conscience, you know, that's just, they don't know, they don't see what they're doing, you know. It's hard not to be angry though, anger though. It's it's hard not to be, you know, really irritated to the to the ninth degree, really. <clears throat> Trust me, I get it. <laughs> so WME. WME. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna shuffle a little more. I'm gonna shuffle a little more. WME. 
They would like to glow her up. They want to glow her up. That's their job. You've got to glow her up. But she's the devil. It's just enmeshment. <clears throat> My job is to glow up the devil. Yeah. They got to glow her up. They want to make her happy. Let's make her happy. Let's make the devil happy because she's paying us money. So really, it's just money, people, low vibe, conscious bonding. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy, fantasy enmeshment with Megan. And his job is to glow her up. We need to see new new opportunities for her. That's the only way she can heal is if we see it opportunities. Uh, we need to we need to you know help her out. The sun bleaches the devil. Okay, we can bleach out and purify the devil. So his job is partly to clean up her image. We got to bleach and purify Miss Devil Devil Megan, Megan the Devil. Yeah, and we're going to puppeteer her more than likely. So I think he's puppeteering her too. I've said this before. I think he's kind of malignant as well, to say the least. And so he's going to play her. He's getting money from her. He's pulling her puppet strings, making her believe that he can purify her image. I don't think he can because what I have here under the deck is right here. There's the top of the deck. There's the bottom of the deck. It is Ace of Swords in reverse. He's lying to her that he can turn her into the Earth Mother of the queen of pentacles he's gonna let her go they fight too much this is what he's hiding from her it's under the deck subconsciously this is what he's thinking uh you know it's a battle it's an absolute battle too much drama too much chaos i'm just gonna give it up i need normalcy i'm gonna give it up it's a bad idea to try and turn her into an earth mother i'm gonna give up the fight for peace so i can re return to normalcy which is to glow up other devils out there. And I'm just taking her money. I'm really not helping her. I can't help her. I can't help her. I'm going to drop the ball. I'm, I'm in it for the money. It's like hitting the money wheel. It's like hit, it's hitting the lottery. Hitting the money lottery with her. And that's what he's doing. So no, he's not in it for her. No, he's not her friend. Um, I'm sure his wife's not his, her friend either. So I would say it's a facade. They're playing her. She's playing on them. Center of the deck. They're supposed to rise her up. She wants to be famous. I'm supposed to make her famous. I'm supposed to make her charismatic. She's actually in reverse. She's actually a reverse. She's a wallflower, flat effect. Nobody likes her. She's unliked. She's boring. She's a drama queen who's angry and domineering. She's erratic and dramatic with flat effect. She has no personality or charisma. People don't like her. People don't want to be around her. How can you become a celebrity when you're like that? You can't. She's very bitchy. She's cowardly and she's toxic. All right. So she's not a lioness boss. She's not, a, she's not creative. She can't create anything if her life depended on it. She's not magnetic. She's not enthusiastic. People are not enthusiastic about, about her. No one wants to be around her. Everybody knows. She just wants to rise up. She lacks courage. She's a coward. She's such a coward. That's why she's so toxic. That's why she's toxic is because she's a coward. She cannot do it. So I got to put on my social mask, my devil social mask, because I'm a coward. Because I'm a coward. I truly have nothing going for me. I'm going to mask up. I'm going to mask up because I'm a coward now. So let's put on our social mask. Well, that mask gets very heavy. He wants to return to normalcy. He knows he's he's just extorting money out of her. So he's trying to feed the devil, make her feel like she's getting somewhere. But he knows that he's going to give up. Another give up. It's going to be very a very uh, unhappy closure here. Uh, negative completion with the nine in reverse. He will not be able to help her. She's so envious and greedy. He cannot rise her up because it will never be enough. This is value of a 12, no dualities, no new sparks for her, very negative conclusion. Uh, she cannot persevere. He cannot persevere. He cannot control the direction. Nine upright, you know, eight upright, actually, you can control the direction. So it goes from eight to nine. We've got a nine in reverse. He could not. So basically what that's saying is he cannot con control the direction of how people see her. So he's failing. And she will all and the greed and envy is off the table. And that's why nobody likes her because she's greedy. She's envious. 
she's not stable she's unstable she has no connection to the environment she's in she's faking it she's actually the flat effect wallflower so she has no true connection anywhere she's at she cannot handle the problems of rising up and being fame she won't manage it well for another thing she's got poor judgment she has no sound judgment she has no personal security so that's the other problem. Not only that, but physical, actual bodyguard security. If she was to become famous, now what is she going to do for security? Uh, she's really at risk of losing everything. That's why he took her on. That's why he's getting money out of her. That's why he knows it's poor judgment. He knows she's lying. He knows she's not truthful. But it's a money wheel. It's like hitting the lottery. She will always be that jealous, envious person who moves with caution who's a wallflower flat effect and will never get anywhere. So he doesn't, he knows he cannot help her. He's not truly helping her. He's using her. Uh, there will be no fruition from the investment and the time that he puts into it. It's a fail. The, the fruition's not coming in. This is like the cornucopia in reverse. It's not going to come. The, the bounty will never come with her. She will never rise up. He knows she doesn't have the goods. He probably has a good indication of who who has that it factor, that it factor usually requires singing, dancing, and acting. The, the, it's called the triple th threat. Any entertainment industry person knows you need to be a triple threat. Megan doesn't have any triple threat in her whatsoever. She can't sing, she can't dance, she can't act. What the hell is he representing her for? <laughs> Good question. What the hell? Money, 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 money. Makes him look good temporarily having her. Makes him look like, wow, yeah, I can do this. I can try to get the universe to agree with me, but really it's for himself. I really feel he's doing this strictly for his own financial gain. He's using her. It's going to crash and burn, giving up. Coming to the end of the road, mentally giving up the fight. He knows eventually Megan's going to give up the fight too because she has no choice, because nothing's happening. Mentally giving up the fight because she's mentally sick. So there goes the psychosis. Megan will go back into her fantasy land, her little illusions, her fantasy. And then she's going to think, okay, who's going to share a fantasy with me? I'm, I'm living in terrible fear. I'm fighting with everyone. I'm going to split. I'm going to split you black or white, but she's going to have to give up. She's aware that she splits people black and white. She's going to mentally give up on even splitting. So she's going to be deep in fantasy here. Deep in fantasy that she's a lioness boss who everybody loves. Deep in fantasy that she's an independent, wealthy female and the money just keeps flowing in and growing on the trees. And that one tree grows into a forest of money trees. She's going to fantasize that she's able to overcome all her challenges and beat and win and succeed at the end game. But she's going to go deep into fantasy about winning, not the failure. More than likely, it'll be flipped because of the mental illness and the fear is going to take over. The only way for her to feel comfortable is to go into fantasy. So this is the psychosis here of dreaming. So she's going to fantasize of the best things for herself. Total divorce from reality. And what's going to end up happening is she's going to be sucked. This, the incubus succubus is going to have to go away and wither away with the six of swords in reverse. Uh, and she's going to be stuck. She's in a very stuck position. She cannot transition out of this situation. She cannot get out of it. It's very emotional. She's going to be drowning in her own tears. Uh, very stuck. She's got nothing to add. Uh, nothing's going to be accomplished in terms of fame and rising up and being liked and being the boss and being wealthy and growing a, tr a forest of money trees. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. There's the money trees. She's going to be stuck. So she's going to still be fantasizing about, about resources because who can I, who can I um, get into an argument with? Because what she does, she gets into an argument. So this is what antisocials do. They get you into an argument and that argument is to create confusion. So she's going to be stuck. She's going to call up people. Okay, what resources do I have? Because she's going to be going back into planning and scheming mode, like what I said earlier, that she's going to try to be, she's going to try to seek advantages. So she's going to look at the resources of the Seven of Pentacles. She's going to look at 
okay, who's my friends? How much money do I have? How much in savings? Where's all the money at? Let's go get it. Let's look at it. Let's collect it. Let's take a look at it. Uh, who's worth, who can help me grow it into more? What relations are worth it? Because I'm very stuck now. But this is where she goes back into competition and everyone's my nemesis. And so she creates this con this conflict and drama to get your attention so that you're brewing problems with her. They, they can't do this alone. They need your attention. They need your attention to get you to help them grow. So that's why they create chaos and drama everywhere they go. That's why they have a love of chaos and drama. And that's why it's entanglement and it's not love. So she's going to try and entangle someone by arguing. Um, that arguing is the way to suck you in to get you to doubt your mind. And then they claim scapegoat. They claim I'm stuck. Nobody loves me. I have no money. I'm ready to end it all. I can't do this. I'm so fearful. I'm so fearful. I don't know who's my friend and who's my foe. Everyone's lying to me. Everyone's lying to me. I don't know who to trust. So there goes that victim pity play of pretending, pretending to be the scapegoat. I'm everybody's scapegoat. I'm the, the world is against me. The world's against me. The moon's against me. I have problems with my mother too. Mirroring. So then she wants to go into mirroring mode over whoever residual benefits, whoever on the tree is left, whoever she deems is worthy of her time and attention to draw up shit with them. She'll do it. But that's, she does it to regain normalcy for herself, to calm her inner demon. And that's how she does it. But he's going to break off from her so he can get that mental peace. He knows chaos and drama is what feeds her. That's what feeds her money tree. That's the only way she can make money is through chaos and drama. And he's an entertainment industry company, supposed to get them jobs. He's not getting them jobs, so he's going to have to let her go. But in the meantime, he got some money from her. He got some money. He got what he wanted, but he was disloyal and dishonest about it. So she's stuck and it was, and she's not going to, she's going to realize it was poor judgment. Uh, it's going to be a negative announcement that he's going to hear. I'm letting you go. We're done and over with. It's coming to a negative conclusion, conclusion, closure here. Um, you know, we cannot reincarnate your, your image. That's really what he's trying to do. We're trying to reincarnate your image. So people forgive you because judgment upright is a spiritual awakening of forgiveness and letting go of grudges. There's too many grudges out there on you, Megan. And there's very limited resources, very limited resources that we have here. And you're in a really stuck position with these limited resources. I know that you paid us for money, but we can't seem to be able to change the perception of other people. People just see you as a liar of dishonesty and very unknowable purposes and you lack logic. I guess this was a bad idea. So given her the negative announcement, this was really, I'm sorry, it was a bad idea. We shouldn't have tried. We tried, but we failed, in essence. Uh, what else? Too much grudges here. And um, we, we're failing here. This is a fail position. It's a no position. You're paralyzed by fear because you're stuck. I'm sorry. We can't do this anymore. So he's going to pull out. He's They're not friends. I would be surprised if this Victoria Jackson story is even true. And we're going to let you go on your path with free will. And they know she's going to go dark, really dark with the Knight of Swords in reverse, complete total disregard for other people. See, he knew he wanted to go on this journey with her with total disregard for her. He knew that she needed the path and that she's kind of taking this fresh approach. Uh, he thought he, he made her believe that he can do this fresh approach and take a chance and hopefully we'll be we'll be successful. We can improvise. Let's improvise. But the improvising is failing. It, there's no stability in it with the Knight of Swords in reverse. With the Knight of Swords in reverse, there's, he has actually zero consideration for her. He really doesn't care about her journey. And he's no longer going to go in to help her on her journey. So he's going to call it off. He's going to break it off with her. And he's not going to go in there to help her. Uh, because he knows if he does, her journey is all about war. War and battles and smear campaigns. That's, that's really the only way she makes money is through grudges. Her money tree is the grudge tree. That's her money tree. That's the only way she can make money. 
And he doesn't want his path to be all about creating war. Because that's just not what he's hired to do, is to create war to make you famous. It's just not a good business plan. So he's going to let her go. Even though he was in it for the money, he's using her. He knows this is not the game plan of success for himself, so I see him letting her go. I'm going to let you go. Let's hope the universe blesses you, Megan. But this is where she gets dark on him. She can be very, very dangerous and reckless and even self-harming. So she may try and claim self-harm. I'm going to unalive myself if you do this to me, Aerie. So she'll probably claim that she's going to do that. I'm going to take the risk, you know. I'm going to I'm going to take the risk and I might just you know on this journey my journey might be over with self-harming myself if you can't help me. And she might threaten that because she's done it before. Usually past behavior predicts future behavior. So she's going to play the victim pity play. Uh, you're not giving me what I want, so I'm going to hurt myself. Just like what she did with Harry in the crown, she's going to do it again. Why? Because she's antisocial. She's antisocial. She has no consideration for other people. But it's all fake and platonic. The high priestess in reverse is a very platonic individual with no friends, no connections, no aces in her feelings. She doesn't care about anyone else, but she only cares about herself. Complete disregard for social norms. I'm going to hurt myself, or I can hurt someone else while I'm doing it. <clears throat> and I have no conscience, and I don't care. I have no conscience. I have no aces in my feelings and I have no conscience with the nine of swords in reverse. Nine of swords in reverse is taking a step back from your conscience. You're not crying. You're not, you're not going to pity. No one's going to cry for me. Well, I'm not going to cry for them. I had no feelings for them anyways. I'm antisocial. So this is like her being somewhat unmasked by him, kind of him knowing kind of what she is. So now he is going to be number public enemy number one to him on her journey from here on out. She's going to totally disregard him. She's going to have no aces in her feelings for him, and she's not going to be bothered by whatever she decides to do with that antisocial energy of complete, utter rebellion. Um, she basically is superficial, and she's self-focused, self and she knows it. A very disconnected individual doesn't have much of a conscience, does not cry for the behavior they do. He kind of knows it. I think he's a little terrified of her. He knows he has to cut her free. He knows he got involved with a snake, in essence. He knows she's a snake. He's kind of a snake, too. One recognizes one, and they got in the, they got in the pig pen together and got dirty together, is how I feel about it. I think they're both dirty, and but this dirty player knows how to play her more than she can play him. He's the one in the driver's seat. He's the one in control. He's the one who's more superior and higher elevated than her. She, there's nothing she can do about it. So that's how I see it. And Victoria, Victoria Jackson, the makeup artist, let's find out if she's truly friends with Megan. Let's put this here before I go. And I hope you have a nice Sunday. Here we go. Is Victoria Jackson protective of Megan's friendship? Is she protective of Megan? Is Victoria Jackson protecting Megan? Is Victoria Jackson protecting Megan? Is she protective of Megan, Victoria Jackson? No, she's not. No. Is this all a scam? Is this all puff piece, puff piece rumor? Yes. Is there any truth to her friendship with Victoria Jackson? Is Victoria Jackson friends with Megan at all? No. No, they're not friends. They're not friends. Once again, it's all fake PR. She's got to align herself from with someone. Victoria Jackson was at Oprah's um, Oprah's house with J Lo and a bunch of other celebrities, and Megan was not invited. Okay, Megan was not invited to that, so I think she just saw that as an opportunity. Oh my, I need to be friends with Victoria Jackson. Oprah had a party for her, and Megan was not invited. Do you think that if, if Victoria was completely protective and defensive of Megan, she would have had her at that house, at that party? Uh, yes, she wasn't there. So no, there is no connection there. All right, you guys, till next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys.